Get ready to challenge conventional beliefs about what's possible in creating health, wealth, and happiness. You are listening to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge. This hit show is providing you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. It is time to open and expand your awareness, accelerate your well-being as Megan shares wisdom, teachings, and experience from a lifelong journey of the heart. Enact the power of radical change with ease and lift your desires to a new perspective. Now, here's Playing on the Edge Radio. Wow. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. I get to join Megan Edge with uh, this conversation about playing on the edge radio. Today, I just wanna say two things. One is we're gonna be talking about what does it mean to be on the edge of desire? Mm -hmm. And desire is one of my favorite, favorite words. But I wanna take a moment, uh, Megan, if we could, Mm -hmm. because we don't really take time to do this and it is directly related to the word desire. We don't take time to talk about what you're creating in your life, in your world. And I want to take a moment to do that. I want to talk about the confident healer. I want to talk about, you know, what's happening with you on social media, because these manifestations are a Mm -hmm. result of desire, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And it's something that I was thinking about before the show started is what do we what do we do when the desire has been fulfilled or has been met? Where do we take it next? And in the in the context of the work that I do and what I've created, one of my desires for such a long time, 20, 30 years, I had this desire to teach people about themselves and to help them fulfill their own potential and their own empowerment. And I wasn't clear at when I was much younger what that was going to look like, but I could feel it in my body that there was this wisdom that I could access, which I could then share with others. And part of that desire was to teach. And from that, and from all the work that I've done, has come what is now essentially a a school, um, a school that is centered around the art of healing. The Confident Healer is an intuitive, intensive healers program that now certifies those people who have that burning desire to be of help, uh, to be of service in the world, to make a difference in the world in this healing way. It gives them the opportunity to learn the tools and the Mm -hmm. techniques that I have worked with, that I've developed, that I've created, and in a 10-month intensive, be qualified to open up their own healing studio mm-hmm. and help other people with that, with their own transformations. Yeah. yeah. And then at the same time, there's a whole energy s- segment to the work that I do and, and the energy work that I have trained in um, being the foundation being Reiki. I have then taken all of that and created another training program called intuitive energy massage, which I'm now certifying healers in so that they can take that transformational m- uh, modality into their healing work as well and take their clients into a deeper place of permanent healing, radical healing. I love it. And we don't take enough time to talk about this. We don't. And, and today's show is about desire. And so if we don't take a moment to really stop for a minute and say, Mm -hmm. yeah, today's show is on the edge of desire. And what I love about this is it's kind of cool to kind of watch you almost being like growing up in my family animated when you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I actually think your mic is hitting your little heart jewelry. So we're getting a little extra sound from that. But this is the point (laughs) about desire and passion coming together. And, you know, every once in a while, we got to bang a drum or two. That's right. (laughs) Uh, We got to bang a drum or two. We got to just like, you know, shake up our heart a little bit, you know, with our voices. And so I love that that happened because here's what I, I love about observing it. I'm thinking to myself, wow, where is our voice in the conversation of desire, number one? Mm -hmm. And it's important to talk about how we go from desire to manifesting what you talked about. We're going to talk about it throughout the show today, right? Here's the question. Let's talk about from your perspective and what you teach. What is desire? Is it a need? Is it a want? Or is it something 
uh, totally different from your experience? I would say it's all of the above. Uh, and, and even more than that, it's a physical, it's a physical, oh, it's a, for me, it's a physical experience. Even just talking about desire, I can feel it right in my solar plexus. This, this intuitive place in our body that we lead with energetically, that we can follow the energy that comes out of our sacral center. And we can trust that energy to take us in the direction that is our ultimate desire. If we are honest with ourselves about what that desire is, Pat, I, because what I find in the work that I do, um, and even with my students, for them to fully embody their desire means they have to be completely honest with what it is that they want and why they want it. And that's not always an easy thing for us no. to do because it takes us into a place of vulnerability mm -hmm. to really truly say what you desire and then to believe that you have the capacity to fulfill that desire, to manifest it, like you said, that's a, that's a leap of faith. So I, I would say, actually, that, that brings it right around, that desire is a leap of faith. And that's why we're on the edge of desire. I'm getting covered in goosebumps as I'm saying this. There's so yeah. much energy behind that. Yeah. To yeah. say yes to what you truly want, knowing it's your truth, and having the courage to do that. Honestly, Pat, I think it brings everything we've ever talked about in all of these shows. It brings it down to this one beautiful moment that desire is a leap of faith. Yeah, let's talk about this in real terms. So for the people that are listening, you know, both Megan and I, we have desires. Jessica has desires, Benny has mm -hmm. desires, Carter has desires. Matter of fact, Carter is actually manifesting his desire. So is Benny, Carter's going off on vacation to Switzerland. But, you know, you and I, Megan, we have desires. And I wanna talk about mm -hmm. how we get from a desire that may not really even seem like a desire, uh, to mm -hmm. you and I talking about this today, Facebook Live on the network. Uh, I can't even begin to even talk about how this network even manifested. Yeah. But the point that I want to have with you is, you know, how have these desires, both yours and mine, stemmed from wanting to help people? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they've stemmed from. It, as you're talking, I'm... I'm... I'm feeling into the amount of time in, in linear time that it has taken me to create this body of work that I now teach other people in. And it has been a 10 year journey from the moment I put my shingle out and called myself Healer, capital H Healer. It's also been an almost 50 year journey of being in this life and, and having all of my life experiences and being willing to allow my life experiences to be the direction that my desire has taken. So yeah. for example, one of the things I want to share with our audience, and, and if you're listening on the radio, I'll describe this. This is the manual wow. that I've written out of all of my experiences for wow. the confident healer. And the whole thing, it's so beautifully put together. This wow, is, let's see that. It's, wow. it's all, yeah, it's all my own photography, pictures that I've taken over my journey. My husband, Darren, has put it all together into this absolutely gorgeous manual. Um, there's the root chakra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. And, and, this, and this takes my students through these each, each month, a, a different area of metaphysical healing, a different area of their own healing. Mm. So for, for my students to have the desire to be a healer is actually not enough. They also need to have the desire to do their own healing work. Oh, so that boy. they can really truly hold space for somebody else's journey without getting themselves caught up mm -hmm. in the other person's story, mm -hmm. right? If they've done their own healing work, then they can hold that space. They'll recognize that boundary and really be able to do it. So like I've, ha I've had students say to me, well, I just want to learn. I just want to learn the technique. I don't want to do the personal work. Then it's not a fit. This is an intensive. You have to have the desire to do the intensive work on yourself in order to be able to truly show up as, as one of my healers, as mm -hmm. a mind, body, and soul healer, which is your, your certification. All of this has taken time. And my point is that when somebody looks at what I have created now and sees the intuitive energy massage manuals that I've written and the confident healer and the way that it's structured and all the videos I've created and everything, that whole social media, the whole body of work, it, it looks 
it looks impressive. It is impressive, but it's also come out of each day doing something, either in my own healing or with my clients or with my students. And it's, it's each day over the last 10, 15, 20 years of saying yes to that desire that sits in my solar plexus to be able to make a difference in the world and to be able to have the capacity to help other people recognize what their desire is and feel safe enough to pursue that desire. Yeah, it takes time. It takes time. And what I love about this is, I, we're gonna talk about this throughout the show today, but one of the things I realized when you and I both, we looked at our lives and we had some situations which you previously have talked about the, in our lives that mm -hmm. warranted healing, even if we, we didn't know they did. In mm -hmm. my case, I had healed a lot of things, but the reality was that I had never really had to, quote, heal my body, which carried the cellular mm -hmm. memory of past <clears throat> wounds. I yeah. had not really, nobody ever said to me, oh, you got a past life, this or that. No, no. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what happened six months after saying yes, dialing a phone number, buying an hour of airtime on internet only radio, then buying five days a week on KKNW, another credit card, paying for airtime. Just in case folks don't know, the reason we're here is because we buy airtime to do this, right? Mm -hmm. But why was it at that point in time on April 1st of 2004, I came down with what they called the mystery disease. We're going to take a short break because Megan, I'm not yeah. going to explain this. <laughs> Megan's going to explain this. When we come back, we're going to talk about what it is we learn about empowered, collaborative, and personal versus public desire. What happens when we step out into the public? Does it cause a new level of raising a bar for the healing journey? Yeah, let's take a short break, everyone, because you might know what I'm talking about. We'll be right back with the show. Today, we're talking about on the edge of desire on playing on the edge radio. I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm here with Megan Edge. We'll be right back. Are you your story? Or can you change your story? Can you change what you believe to be true about yourself and your circumstances as part of your healing journey? What if you were to change your expectations? What if you were to invite ease and cooperation into every day and then step back and see what happens? It might just be easier. I'm Megan Edge. And I hope that you'll join me on my new radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. I got to get mm -hmm. the groove on. Got to be right. a little groove in it. Yep, yep. Got to desire the dance. Got to desire the dance. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, wow, well, that's, uh, we could go into a whole nother direction with that. Um, <laughs> Megan, before we jump back, because this is really important for us to be talking about public versus private desire, what it means, mm -hmm. and how do we get from that to actually step into the life we want to live. Right. Um, and you have prepared, as you showed us earlier, various ways for people to work with you, whether mm -hmm. it's coaching whether it's the workshop, tell us how they can do that, how they can find out more and, you know, give out your website if you, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. It's super easy. It's meganedge.ca. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> uh, and on the website that you will find the information about the confident healer and about the intuitive energy massage. And I just want to let people know that these classes are coming up in September. We're starting a whole new journey of the confident healer on September 22nd and that's the first workshop of the 10 month intensive for the confident healer and then we have ongoing IEM courses that's the intuitive energy massage it's a it's a three-tiered program at this point so we have level one where you learn two of the techniques that I've created 
Level two takes you into another three techniques. There's actually five ways of working with intuitive energy massage. Mm -hmm. And then people can become master teachers where they can actually end up teaching their own students and certifying mm -hmm. their own students using the teaching modality that I've created for, uh, for the class. So I've got students who are ongoing towards their master teacher. Uh, and then I've also got students coming in at that level one or that level two. And at the end of their practicum from level one, they can begin offering and getting paid to do this work. Right? And that's, that's something that's really key um, for my students. I want them to succeed. It really matters to me mm -hmm. that they are successful in their healing business, that this work can support them. It can support their families. It can pay the rent. It can put food on the table. They can succeed and thrive doing this work and being of service yeah. to other people. And part of what I've created with this is a community of healers. I know when I first started doing this work, I was very isolated. I was doing this work by myself on mm. my own. That's what it felt like. And because I was working so hard to create this, I didn't give myself a lot of time to go out into the community and see who else was out there doing this sort of work and, and meet people. When I started to teach my workshops, which I've been doing for years now, decades, um, part of what I wanted to do was to encourage my students to stick together, to help each other out, to work with one another, rather than falling down that rabbit hole of competition. Oh. You know, my clients, nobody can have my client. <laughs> oh. it, it's the foundation of what I teach is collaboration instead of competition. Yeah. You know, that leads to this, the, you know, what we're going to talk about next here. And this is really important. You know, it's really fascinating. I, I only know what goes on on other networks and other places when somebody comes over and they say something like, I can't believe you people. I love that. <laughs> I can't believe you people do that. Yeah. Um, I can't believe you're actually going to s reach out to the other hosts to have me come on their shows. Mm -hmm. I can't, but I, I mean, it's really fascinating to me because I don't look at what anybody else, I don't get my orders, my marching orders from another network. I get it from a whole nother source of energy, right? <laughs> okay, okay, yes. understand. Yeah, um, absolutely. And we've never held back at offering ideas. I mean, I go back to the original station that I started that wrong phone number on Voice America. And mm -hmm. I go back to Jeff. And Jeff has interviewed me and I've interviewed him. And I said, Jeff, you know, when we're done with our technology, you'll get, you know, first refusal for it. I don't think differently like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yet it's so important to decide for yourself what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. You talked about collaboration among students. Yes. I want to talk with you about this with desires because... Okay. If I come from a place of lack or scarcity mm -hmm. in my initiation mm -hmm. of the desire, mm -hmm. then perhaps I'm going to come bump into situations where lack and scarcity is the norm for yes. that result. Absolutely. Yeah, you'll put out that vibration. All right. It's that the whole uh, way of sort of metaphysical thinking that the vibration that we create through our desires we then send that out into the world and it attracts for us the expectation that we have created and the vibration that we have set up for that creation. One of the things that I teach my students how to succeed in their businesses is to put out the energetic invitation for their ideal client to show mm -hmm. up for them and to borrow on one of my mentors sayings, your ideal client is looking for you. They're not looking for anybody else. They're looking for you. And there are how many billions of people on the planet right now? I don't yeah. know, seven? <laughs> yeah. There's enough wounded people in the world to go around that if every single one of us became healers, we'd still have clients. Right. Right? Because mm. of who we are, we will attract those clients who can best benefit from our experiences, our healing, our personality, mm -hmm. our vibration. So my client is not going to be the same client that's going to go and see the healer sitting next to me. She or he is going to have their own clients show up who yeah. are relating to them. So there is no competition, mm -hmm. right? And so the desire, it, my desire, my personal plus professional desire is could we just all get along already? Oh yeah, oh, like, come really? on. I, I'm with you. I <laughs> am we just so get along? with you on this, right? <laughs> 
But you know, you know what it really points to? It points to this for us to talk about. It points to understanding wh what is generating my desire, mm -hmm. right? Yes. What is generating my desire to create this thing here? Yeah. You know, what is generating that? And yeah. why is it now that there's an entire team of people here, right? Carter, mm -hmm. Rob, Jessica, Megan, Marsha, Linda, Kim, Sarah, an entire deal of people here that all of a sudden have the same desire. How does yeah. that even happen? But for me, I had to understand mm -hmm. 15 years ago, what was at the core of that desire? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not sure I would have been here. Can you talk about how important it is for us to understand? Am I using the right language? Yeah. Where, where the desire comes from. Yes. And that's part of the honesty piece that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You need to know what your selfish why is. Why do you want this thing that you are desiring? Right. So the work that I had to do around that was, why do I want to help people? What is the benefit to me? What do I get out of helping other people? And what do I want to see it become? So I could say, well, I want to save the world. I don't actually want to save the world. And I came to the understanding that the world doesn't need me to save it. <laughs> so we can let that one go. And in fact, I don't need to save anybody. Mm. That's not going to be helpful. If I come to this work with the intention to save others, then I'm not being honest with myself about what it is that is motivating me to do this work. Wow. My selfish why is so that I can be here. And by here, um, if you're watching live on Facebook, you can see that I'm not in my normal office. I'm outside. <laughs> I'm at my cottage. I'm, this is live on Main Island, which is um, where my cottage is where my family has been for generations. My girls are the fifth generation mm. of kids to get to grow up and experience life here on Main Island. And my selfish why is so that I do this work so that I can come up here and eventually live here full time and do my work from here. Mm. Do wow. my workshops from here, do my retreats from here, bring people to the island so they can experience its, its healing, its magic, its beauty. All of that is so that I can be here, mm -hmm. right? It's not to save the world. It's not to save anybody else. It's not to be famous. It's not to be successful. Those can all come as a part of the work that I do because that would give me a bigger platform, a bigger voice. I could share yeah. my beliefs, my truths, my wisdoms if it's helpful to other people. But ultimately, end of the day, my selfish why is so that I can be here with my herb garden, with my beach, listening to the ravens and just being. Yeah. You know what, this, this is really fascinating uh, conversation, because one of the things that, that I want to just really get to is the ego has taken a bad rap for a lot yeah. of things in life. The ego, the ego gets confusing for people when it gets lumped in to some kind of, now let me use a little psychology term that I rarely use, some kind of abnormal behavior. You know, mm -hmm. we blame the ego, which isn't mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. See, the ego may be that thing that got me a little bit moving forward on that first hour of airtime. Yep. But the interesting thing and the question I get is all about the whole idea of showing up as mm -hmm. Dr. Pat. And I have to tell people that this was not the name of the show. I never wanted to tell anybody about Dr. Anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about going back to school. I rarely talked about it to my friends. All they knew is every time we went away for the weekend, I was doing research. The show was called Crust Busting Your, Life, Your Way to an Awesome Life. Why? Because I created Crust Busting. Why? Because I was so stuck. I didn't mm -hmm. have a fancy metaphysical way to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And yet the desire to share what I learned about getting unstuck was so important. Isn't that the same for you at many levels? It's because you've yes. been through the fire, right? That's right. Yes. And my personal belief is that if I can do it, anybody can do it. But there's nothing special about me that allows me to create what I've created, to stand up in front of people and talk to them, to invite people, excuse me, invite people to come into my courses, um, to write my books, to, to publish my books. Like There's nothing special about me 
what is different, I think, is that I have decided, I've made a conscious choice to allow the experiences of my life to have meaning mm -hmm. and to have purpose. And I, I give them sense so that I can learn from them and so that I can truly say, if I can do it, you can do it. Right? If you want to be a healer, get off your ass and get out in the world and do your healing work because the world needs healers. No more excuses. And yeah. if I'm willing to say that to somebody else, I have to be willing to say it to myself too. Yeah. And I'll <laughs> tell you what, you know, the thing that I discovered, and we're going to talk about this when we come back, because this is really going to get to the core of whether or not you want to create the life you desire. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about looking at desires, even the desires sometimes that we generate within ourselves? How can we look at them, whether they're quote, acceptable or unacceptable from the same lens of love. What can we do to understand mm -hmm. that? So that for most yeah. of us, we can look at, is the trauma in our lives saving us? Is the trauma in our lives not saving us? What are some of the things that we want to just be mindfully aware of as we look at desires? Because some of them are going to get us to where we want to go. And some of mm -hmm. us, some of them are not. I know this for a fact. I look at a lot of years of my life where, boy, I just wake up one day and say, how the heck did I get here? Well, I don't have the answer to that, but Megan Edge does. Let's take a short <laughs> break. We come back. She's going to we'll see us. So, yeah. Did you wake up one day and say, oh, boy, how did I get in the middle of that? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered how you might feel differently if the books were full of her instead of him? What if your history lesson was filled with powerful women leaders and rulers? As a woman, would you feel more empowered? As a man, would you see women differently? I'm Megan Edge. I'd love for you to join me on my radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat on Transformation Talk Radio. I hope to see you there. Okay, I know who that is. Shaka Khan. Right, Benny? <laughs> yes, <Shaka> Khan. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's a flashback wow. to the 80s. <laughs> yeah, boy. Talk about desire. Oh, you know, just just popped into my head. The the nineteen eighties was very much about the me. Right, we went from the sixties that was all about community. We went into the seventies that was all about desire. That decade was really about taking it to the extreme of of whatever your desire was, just fully embodying it, whether it was drugs or sex or partying or leaping off tall buildings in a single bound, whatever it was. And then we moved into the energy of the nineteen eighties, and it was very corporate, and it was me, me, me. <sighs> Oh, God. All about me. Oh, oh <laughs> enough, about, enough about me. What do you think about me? Oh, this uh, is so my life. Remember that? Oh, I lived it. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I lived it. And I, then I think the 90s was just confused. I think we were just really confused by the time we got to the 1990s. Oh. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to want? You know, I think a lot of people went into some really big spirals in the 1990s where they had thought that they knew what they wanted. But then the rug got pulled out from underneath them and they woke up one morning, like you and I were talking about the break, with this sudden realization that none of that is what they wanted. That's what their parents wanted. That's what their mother wanted or their dad wanted or their culture wanted. It's not what they actually wanted. And I think a lot of people from our generation started moving towards a, a questioning of what is important to them around that time, especially as we moved into the 2000s. And that yeah. whole 1999 and you know, the end of the world as we know it and all of that. But you know what happened in the 90s? I love that you're talking about this because you're so right about the 80s. I think about what happened between me doing disco at Studio 54, you know, mm -hmm. dancing to the Donna Summer. And even before that, you know, like getting all down with the bands like Cream. And then we come into the 80s and all of a sudden my promotions, my paycheck, my salary, 
how far I could go up. I even went back to school, like really undergraduate degree at night took me 13 years, but Mm -hmm. it was that. And Mm -hmm. I, and you're right about the transition in the eighties. It's not like we woke up in 1980 that happened. It was a transition, but Mm -hmm. in, in the nineties, here's the interesting thing about the nineties. When you think about the 90s starting off with the song by Sinead O'Connor, Nothing Compares to You. Oh, yeah. And moving through the mid 90s with the Mm -hmm. repeal of the psychological contract that says, if you work hard, if you do this, if Mm -hmm. you do that, and you put in your 30 years and you go ahead and do this, I am going to give you a pension. I am going to give you benefits. I am going to give you that thing that I said I would give you. That yeah. went away. That yeah. was the 90s. So yeah. it's interesting the way you described your ni- the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I think that the generation of people that grew up in the 90s, how could you not be confused? Yes. Yes, because there's no direction, right? In the 50s and 60s, or 50s at least, it was, you, you grow up, you get married, you get your house with the white picket fence, you have your family, you work for the man all the way through, and then, like you say, you get the golden handshake and, and you retire. It was pretty straightforward for a lot of people. Not for everybody, obviously. There were lots of other things going on in the world. But for the most part, that was the expectation. And I think where we get a lot of those generational clashes is when the next generation doesn't want what their parents wanted yeah. and, and has the capacity to question it. Like, is this yeah. all there is to it? Or is there something more that I could be doing? Yeah. Yeah, I love that we're talking about this because it does have to do with desire and it has to do with desire and the idea of fulfillment of that desire. But what it really does talk to the way you just described that so beautifully is how desires get impacted by the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. And can we hold true to our desires, even if the rules of the game change, right? Because if you look at this and really look at what would it, what was, I, I don't have an example. I was this, I was at the end game of the rules of the game changing. But what if you were a teenager or, or a young adult and you watched your parents, right? Go through mm-hmm. the security of all of the years that have come before the me years, the eighties mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. go into the nineties. And it's like, you are the last person on the totem pole here. How, yeah. how, how was it that anybody was able to create a desire other than I'm looking out for me? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a great question. And as you're asking it, what's coming to my mind is that that piece again about honesty with ourselves, knowing what our truth is, right? And being able to stand in that truth without depreciating anybody else's experiences, right? It's not, it wouldn't be helpful for me to say to my dad, your desire for me to own a house is your desire and it's a terrible desire and and don't even try to put that on me. Right. (laughs) Because that's being very disrespectful to what he grew up in. His belief is very strongly that everyone, to to really stand in your own power, you need to own a home. Well, I've owned a home. I don't now own a home, but I did at a time. And okay, it was all right to own a home, but for me, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a defining moment. It didn't, I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like I'd arrived because I owned a home. My, my work, I feel like I've arrived when I do my work, when I teach my classes, when I graduate my students out into the world, when I watch my clients move through their journey, Mm -hmm. each time they say to me, I'm good now, I'm done, I'm complete. I can go back out in the world and be a whole new me. Awesome, then I feel like I've arrived. So my desires and his desires are not the same. At the same time, it's not my place, nor would it be helpful to be disrespectful of his desires. Right, but here's the thing I wanna ask you, because Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things, you and I could look at people watching this. They're like, yeah, okay, I understand. But wait a minute. What if you desire something at the expense of another person? Do we really believe in the famous quote, the one, you know, the sacrifice of the one for the many? Or Mm -hmm. are we really saying sacrifice the one for the one? We, mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about. We gotta, we're gonna enter in a whole new desire, uh, you know, framework here. Yeah. We're not talking about sacrificing the one for the many. I'm like, oh no, oh no, we're not sacrificing me for what my desire is, right? Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we're gonna really look at. Let's talk about the moral high ground. I mean, yes. I spent eight years studying the consequences of breaking promises. People traumatized by that. Mm-hmm. But the question really is, 
what if we're out in the world and we want to help these traumatized people? So right. how do we separate those desires that at least within ourselves may seem a little bit on the edge? Mm -hmm. Get it? On the edge? <laughs> I could play on words. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the edge, right? Well, yeah, let's get gritty about this. Yeah. All right. There can be good desires and perhaps not good desires. There can be the desire to be altruistic and, and helpful to other people because that makes us feel good about ourselves. Or there can be the desire to hurt other people because that makes us feel good about ourselves. And, and who, who are we to decide looking in from the outside what is excuse me, a good, healthy desire and what is not a good, healthy desire. And, and if you want to get it even grittier and you move into the whole arena of sex and sensuality and pleasure seeking oh and you throw desire in there, I don't know, have you got your safe word ready? Because that's a whole murky oh, oh, listen. area. <laughs> it murky? Murky <laughs> is an understatement. Murky is something that happens when you look in the lake and you can't see the fish. That's murky. But yeah. I got to tell you how many amends I had to go back and make from my behavior in the 60s, right? Uh, which, <laughs> by the way, didn't remember half of them. But, you know, <laughs> as we grow older, you know, the question yeah. really then becomes, are there such things as acceptable and unacceptable desires? Mm -hmm. And this is a personal, personal yeah. level of self-awareness I think we all have to have. But the work yeah. that you do, though, is unlike a lot of other work out in this arena. You mm -hmm. actually explore this with people because I got to tell you, this is not an easy journey to go by yourself. I had to go out no. in the desert twice at two vision quests to even figure out that I was in murky water. Yeah. Well, what was your desire to do that for? I mean, wh where did that come from? What was the Beautiful. motivation for you? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Here's what I've learned. When all okay. else is said and done, mm -hmm. the universe is so much smarter. God, goddess, universe, life force is so much smarter than me. Do you know mm. how I got to go on my first vision quest back when I was in the middle of a doctoral program working for a boutique consulting firm who was paying me to go to school. The guy flew me back just so I could stay on the project. Do you know what was the desire of that trip? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. And we'll tell you, I don't want to tell, I don't want to get into that before we go to break. We'll be right back. Have you ever heard of the 90-10 rule? It goes like this, 90% of the time, no one is thinking of you. 90% of the time, everyone's thinking about themselves. And if you think of it like that, it takes the weight off, right? Because now you're not being judged. I'm Megan Edge. I'd love for you to join me on Playing on the Edge Radio, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Radio FM. I thought for sure Benny would play George Michael, Careless Whisper, or... You know. <laughs> How about you can't always get what you want? Yeah, that's a good one, too. But you <laughs> might just... You <laughs> might just... <laughs> yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. You get what you need. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat. This is Megan Edge. And for those of you out there, please, please check it out. There's so much for you to find out about Megan, her work. All you need to do is go to her website, meganedge.ca. Uh, you're going to be able to find out about the Confident Healer, about Intuitive Energy Massage. And there's a whole new public forum on Facebook. Yeah, we're talking about desire because Megan is one of the few people that actually works this in to a critical part in the work that she does to help others. And before the break, you had asked me a question and we're going to talk about fulfillment now. And we're going to yeah. talk a little story. You asked me about the vision quest. What mm -hmm. was the motivation for the business vision quest? Yeah. Real simple. The guy that I worked for at the time met the woman who later became my mentor, Sedonia Cahill, who passed away in 99, met this woman 
went off on her workshop in the desert for the vision quest, came back and said to me, I want you to go on the vision quest. I'm going to pay for it. Don't forget, I'm paying to fly you back to Claremont every week so you can work here. And I want you to steal her ideas so we can copy them and bring vision quest into the corporation. Wow. What's your story? <laughs> now that's not that, how it turned out, but no, I was going to say, and that was, yeah. that was his motivation though. Right. It's that, that we were talking about that earlier, the teasing out of yeah. what's, what's mine, what's yours. Yeah. You know what, when I went, yeah. I went anyway, knowing that I wasn't going to do that, but I yeah. went, you know, there was so a bigger force. could I have said, no, I'm not going. That's mm -hmm. not me. Mm -hmm. But I went, I intuitively went and, you know, yeah. Sidonia talked to me and I think she knew, but I went. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know how we're going to get there, but we get That's there. Exactly how did it. you get there? Yeah. I was in a workshop, not, not running it, but participating in it with one of my business mentors, Sage Levine, beautiful woman, check her out. She's doing amazing work for women entrepreneurs. And I was in one of her year long programs and we would go down to do these retreats in San Francisco um, three or four times during the year. And this, she took us through this exercise, which I absolutely love. And it's now one that I take my students through. Um, it's called, the, well, it's a selfish why, and it's a, you can have it. And so essentially what you do is two people stand facing each other and one person states every single thing that they could possibly want or desire. And the only response the other person is allowed to give them is you can have that. <sighs> and so when this starts and there's a whole group of us in the room and there's lots of noise and people are laughing, you know, I want to own an Island. I want a jacuzzi. I want a million dollars. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. But you get to this point with this exercise where the energy shifts because now you're being asked to go deeper. Mm. Okay, what more do you want? What more do you want? Take it deeper, take it deeper, because you want to find that selfish why. I hit this place, and I'm, I know I'm going to get emotional because I do every time I tell this story, I hit this place where I said, I want my father's, I want my father to be proud of me. I don't know where it came from. I didn't know. I didn't recognize that that was my underlying motivation for everything that I did. And as soon as I said it, I burst into tears. I just want my dad to be proud of me. And I realized it was like this, this cascade effect that everything I was doing, always in the back of my head was this little tiny voice saying, is daddy going to be proud of me? Mm. Is he going to be proud of his little girl? Mm -hmm. What a huge wow. release that was to recognize that that's what I had been basing everything I'd ever done on, mm. including my work. Will he be proud of me? Once I was able to see that, I could let it go. Yes, I want my dad to be proud of me. Sure, I do. But that's no longer my motivating factor. And I was able to heal that part of me, that little wounded girl who just wanted her dad to not have left her for her parents not to have separated, you know, all the things that, mm. that come from that. I was able to do that piece of work. Wow. And then I was able to stand in my own self and put myself in front of my work and say, I am doing this work because I want to do this work yeah. because it matters to me that I can proudly say, I help those people become healers. Those are my healers out there. Yeah. Those are my IEM practitioners. This is my community that I've created for, yeah. for them. It, it, I was able to take it deeper and I was able to say, okay, then I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to say, put me on social media. I'm willing to say next Oprah. Sure. Why not? Right. <laughs> I can do that, yeah. right? To move yeah. into that place and desire where we can say, I can do that. I'm just going to trust. I'm going to trust. I can do it. Even if I don't know what that's going to look like yet, I'm going to take it from my solar plexus and I'm going to let the energy mm -hmm. lead me forward. Mm. Right? And that's, that's the wish want create. I love it. Which is, I, which is one of my things that I've created out of the work that I've done, this process of wish yeah. want and create. But it freed yeah. up a whole lot of space, energetic space that that was holding, yes. right? It's not that it was yeah. wrong. No. It was occupying space. Perfect. So I love how you say that. other desire could yeah. not come in. So That's you right. could take that next step, right? Yeah. I mean, each of us has that thing within us. Otherwise, we would have lived just a perfect life and none of that would exist. But once that space gets cleared out, we can mm -hmm. then occupy it with the truth of that desire, right? Absolutely. Yes. 
Yes. And we can take it deeper and we can take it further. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So instead of seeking approval yeah. for my actions and my decisions, I came to a place of recognizing I am the ultimate one who is responsible for my life, my desires, my desires being fulfilled. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. It's nobody else's responsibility or job mm -hmm. to make sure I'm happy. That's on me. Yeah. So if I can get really honest, like get into the gritty honest of the desire, what is the motivator? What is the benefit to me if that desire is fulfilled? Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything yeah. changes. And I, that's Absolutely. what I hope people hold on to. Everything changes. Everything changed for me because of my vision quest. What I discovered was that what I really desired is to have a voice for times in my life when I was beaten as a kid in Catholic boarding school and couldn't speak, I wanted to have a voice. When I went through the downsizing and didn't know what I was studying, I figured out I wanted to give voice for people that perhaps seemed to not have a voice for losing their jobs, for their lives becoming traumatic. Yeah. And that now carried forward so that when I dialed that wrong phone number, the idea of having a radio show was built upon giving mm -hmm. other people voice. So that's Absolutely. what you do is even if it doesn't make sense, Megan, when mm -hmm. people are in the middle of this with you, we can say to them, you will learn that thing that will take you on a pathway for all that you desire in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to really touch upon a word that you used there really strongly, okay. which is want. Right. I, you said, I want people to have a voice because you wanted to have a voice. Yeah. And you created a space where you could have that voice and then allow other people to have that voice as well. The power of the word want is really important here because yeah. what a lot of people do for a long time is wish. Oh, and all that a wish does is show you what you think isn't possible. But when you change the sentence from, I wish I could give people a voice to, I want to give people a voice, the action required for you to fulfill that want becomes the create of the wish want create cycle. Oh. And when you listen to the guidance of how to do the want, that's when you manifest. That's when you get fulfillment. Yeah. And, and I love what you said. Circle. And I love what you said. When we can get from want to desire to truly step into the expansive nature of desire, unshackled by our past, mm -hmm. unshackled by anything that happened to us or another, the universe just unloads all of the goodness. Thank you for your message today. Thank you for the work that you do to, to really assist people in getting to the space of desire, because that does take help to get there. Thank you, Megan, for today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for everything you do, too. You've given me a voice, by the way. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I love this, right? Yeah. I, really, I mean, yeah. I'll tell you what, we have really touched on an opportunity for people listening to get rid of whatever it is that is holding them to the wish of Tinkerbell and step yeah. into the desire of dragon fired energy <laughs> in their lives, baby. Thank you, Megan Edge. Love everybody. it. I'm Dr. Thank Pat. You, Dr. Pat. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Welcome. Carter. And thank you to all of you. We'll see you next time.